What is good, everybody? Welcome back to another My Name Toys video. Today, we're back with a brand new WWE Elite Legends set review on the WWE Elite Legends set series number 20 Target exclusive wave. Now, we got some cool things going on in this set, but it, I don't know, man. Not my favorite set of all time, but I am excited for a few things that are going through with this set. Of course, we have Mr. Perfect, Ted DiBiase, who is the chase, and we managed to find both of those on our toy hunt. We have Triple H, and then we have Greg the Hammer Valentine to round out our set. Excited for some stuff in this set, but not completely over the moon about all of them, but we'll, of course, dive into all those things as we progress through it. Kind of unbelievable that we have 20 sets so far of the Legends Wave. I mean, that's longer than the AEW Unrivaled sets by themselves. So that's kind of wicked. Nonetheless, man, let's take a look at every single figure in their packaging. So here's Mr. Perfect in his yellow. We saw this back at, what, the WrestleMania Superstore, which feels like yesterday, but it has been quite a while now. But he's got his white towel in there. Decent looking Mr. Perfect. Excited to get him out of the packaging here. I feel like it's been a minute since we got a Mr. Perfect. We also have the Ted DiBiase Chase figure here in the white suit. You guys know how I love white, so this is going to be very clean for me. If I find this figure again, I will be buying another one simply for the white suit with the bow tie. If you guys didn't know, I'm a bow tie guy, so I would absolutely buy one of these and then customize it a little bit for my own figure. Double jointed arms, updates, stuff like that. I mean, this is right up the money zone. And then we have the green suit, which is so beautiful as well. Great looking Ted DiBiase right here. A great run of the mill Ted DiBiase here in the green suit, which was also a great basic figure back in the day. Then we have Triple H here. Not my favorite figure. Even though I love Triple H at this time, I still am not uh, uh, completely over the moon about this figure, but it's another Triple H, and he's one of my favorites of all time, but I don't know, man. Just, uh, we'll get into all the things about it, but then lastly, we do have the Greg the Hammer Valentine, who has this brand new thigh mold. Got a thick boy coming in with Greg the Hammer Valentine. Looks like he has a pretty good jacket on himself, and you guys know we love a damn good, good jacket, so nonetheless, man, that is pretty much going to wrap up the packaging for all of these legends, so let's do ourselves a favor. Crack these guys out of the packaging, go through them one by one, and find out what WWE Elite Legend Series 20 Target Exclusive Wave is all about. All right, so here's our Legend Series 20 out of the packaging. Okay, looking wave. You know, I've picked them up and posed them around. I've gotten to the good details of the figure set. But what we're going to do is run through each individual figure, breaking down every single thing about it, letting you guys know exactly where we stand with this WWE Elite Legend Series 20 set. I guess we're going to go from left to right, and then we'll finish it off with Greg the Hammer Thickums over there and get into his good jacket. All right, so starting out first, we do have Mr. Perfect right here. And I like this figure for what it is. Now, I think where a lot of people are going to go wrong with this figure is the singlet straps. You know, we saw this back in the day with the ringside exclusive Undertaker, right? Like, you could pull this down and have his torso exposed, but probably how I'd display him, because it just looks weird, right? It's not flat right here, so you do get that little bulkiness right there. Now, it doesn't look like horrific, but still, I think a lot of people are going to want this pulled down more the, more likely than not. And I do like how it connects here. That's actually very clean from the backside. I think that's actually the cleanest way to, to have it. Like, it doesn't look like it's two separate pieces from this angle. But then when you flip it around and you get this little extra bulk right there. I think that's where people get lost, but I like the head sculpt on this guy. Double jointed arms look good. You do have these big black knee pads, which I always hate. Just can't stand them. Think they're trash. Mr. Perfect Boots. He's actually got gray laces in here, which look really, really clean, but yeah, we're gonna go ahead and remove the straps right here, and you guys know we're gonna get our Kurt Angle on right here, and I, I can already see, you know, we have the Ultimate Edition Kurt Angle coming soon, and I really am excited for the figure, even though we think he looks like really, really big, but I could, I, I mean, more often than not, man, I can already see them doing something like this with a Kurt Angle Elite. I mean, I could just see that coming, and I hope it's not the Unforgiven 2001 gear, because I really want a Unforgiven 2001 Kurt Angle with the boots and everything, and I just hope that they don't use this specific idea for it. I'd like to see a smaller singlet torso. I just feel like they make Kurt Angle... Uh, we're all on a tangent about Kurt Angle, but this torso would fit Kurt Angle really well, actually. And this arm size and everything would be perfect for Kurt Angle. I just don't want to use this gimmick right here, which it doesn't look bad if it's just chilling like this. It really doesn't. I just think cloth is better than the rubber mold, and you guys know, this rubber does feel more quality than that rubber we saw in that ringside exclusive Undertaker that we're talking about with the tag titles, that SummerSlam version, but I don't know, with the singlet pulled down, it's actually quite nice, and you can still articulate it and pose it around and stuff, so I don't know, I think up it looks odd, but down like this, it's actually quite nice, actually. I I, I don't know, you guys feeling that or whatever, but I, I still would prefer cloth, but I like the Kurt Hennig. I think the head sculpt's really strong. This is a nice figure. I, I enjoy it, and at the end of the, the video, we're gonna rank these guys from worst to best. Now, outside of that, he does come with a little hand towel as well. Now, it won't wrap around his neck that well, but he can hold it, and it is a nice towel, so lots of towels come with these figures. We got Samoa Joe AEW and Rival Target exclusive towel, and now we got this little handkerchief right here. Smaller in size, but still quality. We also get the Black Intercontinental Championship, which is a championship we don't see too often, so I'm happy to add another one of these to the collection, but when I see 
US title, I'll think of Stone Cold Steve Austin, but you guys can let me know what you guys think. And then for interchangeable hands, you get the fisted hands that come on the figure originally. You get mic holding hands here, and then you get pointer fingers, point at people and tell them to shut the hell up. Now next up, we do have the Chase version of the Ted DiBiase Elite. This is the Chase. The Chase is in white, and the regular edition is in green. So more often than not, you're probably going to find the green version, but the white and gold suit looks really good. We've seen this Ted DiBiase head sculpt multiple times before, and it's okay. It's, you know, it's the, the laughter head sculpt, like, ah, ha, 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 ha. It's pretty good. Gold bow tie in there. You get the money signs here. He's got his little waist wrap. White suit looks very, very clean, of course. He's got the dollar sign on the back of course. Looking very clean. I've also noticed that this jacket piece right here in the middle comes down very, very far. It doesn't hug to the upper arm right there, which eh, I don't know. It looks a bit odd at times, but I think it still works. Double jointed arms, which are nice. Does have the classic legs with the gold stripe going down the side, and then he does have his black boots in there, which I'd probably swap those out, but I don't think he has, like, build a figure like, yeah, I don't think he could switch it out. You know, it's not interchangeable or anything, but Ted DiBiase is looking pretty good right here, man. I really like the white suit. He's very clean, and the articulation on this guy is always great because he's got the Double jointed legs, double jointed arms. He's got the articulation up top. So I actually like the Ted DiBiase figure quite a bit. And then one of his accessories is the interchangeable old man Ted head sculpt. So if you guys want to put like, you know, make a make an NXT version or make an old man Ted, you know, from one of the anniversary shows, you could do that. And then he also comes with some reading glasses, which could use, you could use these on a lot of people. But the glasses fit the figure pretty well too, man. Like look at that right there. And I like the old man Ted head sculpt. I think it looks like him. It's very realistic. So this is getting the job done and I could see people using these glasses for a lot of guys but I guess you can have contacts Ted or, or glasses Ted but nonetheless this is a very nice figure. I'm enjoying the chase. I think he looks very clean and I like the old man Ted head sculpt. I don't know if I'll display him like that to be honest with you but it is still a cool a cool little addition that they threw in there and I think it's awesome. Now the chase figure and the regular version come with the same exact accessories and one thing we've seen a million times is the million dollar championship. Now one thing I wish they'd do like we've seen this mold so many times before man we need a new million dollar championship like get some damn iridescence in here man make this gold shiny we need to it needs to be updated it needs to be bright and shiny like the million dollar title was so i'd like to see a bright and shiny version of this title it needs to be re-updated update this thing it's been a very long time since we've seen this mold but both the regular version and the chase come with the exact same accessories but looking at the regular version suit i really like this green color now it's kind of difficult on camera to get the same exact color that you want there you know it's going to come across different colors but the green in person is very very nice it looks very good though and you do I like how subtle the silver is. It's white, silver, and green. So you get some really nice contrast in there. And he's got the silver details on the sleeves, on the pockets, coming down the side of the leg. Got the silver dollar sign. So this is actually really clean. And the more I look at this figure, the more I kind of like it better than the white suit. And I don't know what that is. We'll see how it comes out in the ranking. But both Ted DiBiase figures are very quality. I love a good suited figure. So getting another Ted DiBiase here with a good head sculpt. I really wish that we could get away from the cartoony look because this does seem to be the exact same head sculpt. There's no real realistic look to it, you know, I'd really like to see you know, similar to what we're seeing in this image back here on the side of the packaging, but maybe we can get to that later, or maybe one day they'll make a ultimate Ted DiBiase. I could absolutely see them doing that, so we'll have to see, but that is your Ted DiBiase figure, and now we're moving on to the game Triple H, and this is the Ultimate Edition head sculpt and that two-pack that came in that SmackDown Jeff Hardy Triple H two-pack with the gold gear, and the shirt's very nice. I'm actually glad to have this shirt in here. It is Velcro, and one thing that you guys are probably going to be bummed out about is when you remove the shirt, it is the exact same gear that we saw on his ultimate edition here so obviously a very iconic gear right like this is one of his most iconic gears he's ever worn early 2000s triple h is what you think of immediately you know 99 2000 right in there however you know since we've already seen this gear i know a lot of people are going to be bummed out about that i really would have liked to seen a different gear or at least like it's just a different graphic i don't know why they would do this but it's pretty much a repaint with double jointed arms of that two-pack triple h that i was talking about i mean even on the knees with the knee wrap and the knee braces standard black boots nothing crazy there. I mean, it's got the double jointed arm treatment, and it does have the same exact head sculpt as well. I don't know, man. It's a good, like, game Triple H, you know? Like, right there again at the beginning of the early 2000s, and you could put it with your Elite 94 Steph. I don't know, man. I just think that they could have done a different look for Triple H, something we haven't seen, especially right here would have been a perfect opportunity to do so, especially since you get the shirt and stuff, but I still like the figure because I love Triple H, and I love this era. I just wish it was a little bit different, even though you could argue this might be better than the Ultimate Edition in terms of articulation and stuff, because that's when they had the old torsos, so 
definitely something to consider when you're thinking about buying this figure. Now, this isn't one of my favorite Triple H shirts designs, but it's still there. It's still a cool Triple H shirt, but it's got like the bloody splatter style Triple H logo there, and it's on a standard black t-shirt. We also get the same exact Ultimate Edition accessory here with like the chain mail or whatever you want to say here. You know, you can put that on there as his entrance gear. And the figure looks good when you do this. You know, you just pop the head off and then slide that thing on there. I don't know, man. I, I like it a lot, actually. Now, the more the more that I look at it like this, I actually dig it quite a bit. So, I'm an idiot. But instead of a water bottle, you do get a spray can here. And I guess that's just for DX, you know, like to spray things. But I don't know. I thought for sure he'd come with a water bottle accessory. But you do get a white spray can, which is what it is. I mean, it could work as... I mean, you could use this as anything, right? As a backstage accessory. It could be hairspray. It could be spray can. It could be, I mean, silly string. I mean, you could use it for really anything. But outside of that, he just comes with fisted hands that have the white tape and the miracle working mic holding hands. And he's even got the white peg over there. That looks good. Alright man, finishing up our set, we do have Greg the Hammer Valentine here. And we probably need to go ahead and undress the man, which sounds weird. And getting into Greg the Hammer Valentine, you guys can see, I like this torso they use for him. Double jointed arms. Head sculpt kind of reminds me of like a young Jim Ross a little bit, but he's got his mullet head sculpt in there with a the black. Looking pretty decent there. On the back, you got rhythm and blues. Very standard gear. Nothing over the top, but it is black and white right there. I kind of dig this gear a bit, you know. It's a very plain Jane, but we do have the thickum thighs in here, man. Look at this new thigh mold. I can already see him using these for a lot of different guys, and maybe some customizers can load up if they go on clearance or something, but the thighs look really good there. You got the white boots with the gray laces again. Two people have gray laces in this video, and then you have the hammer there with the heart. Very, very cool. Standard boots there with the white, and these legs are pinless, man, and you guys know that pinless legs are pretty stiff, but he is on ball joints, so that's good. He's got upper thigh cut and everything like that, and yeah, man, these are all right. I mean, the legs, again, are a bit stiff because they are... Anytime I've seen pinless joints, they're very stiff, but could definitely see the, them using those legs on a few different people, but let's get into his accessories. Now, the first accessory is going to be his good jacket right here. Very nice eagle on the back there. You got all the music notes. It is the white jacket. It's the white leather jacket. Fits the figure well, as you guys saw, but very quality jacket right there. Nothing, you know, bad or wrong about this. I always love some cloth goods, so this makes the figure really stand out for sure. And we didn't see Greg the Hammer Valentine too, too far in the past, right? Didn't he have a chase figure in one of these sets not too long ago? Very cool belt accessory, Greg the Hammer Valentine, and the yellow and blue. He's got the chains going around in the white. Very nice. Just wraps around and then clasp right there. I think this is a new mold, too. Never seen this mold before. So you do get a lot of new things with this Greg the Hammer Valentine figure. But we do have his belt to go with the jacket. We do get his nice goggly sunglasses right here that actually fit the figure quite nice, as you guys saw before. He's got the black shades with the with the gray going around or the silver. And, it, uh. and then last but not least, we do have the breakaway guitar, which, my God, I know I am not the only one who believes that we need a regular guitar that does not break away because these things fall apart, man. Once you take these bands off here, it is going to shatter, and you guys can see it breaks in the back. It's got the rim piece, and then it has that front thing there, and the neck breaks off. And you guys know as well as I do, once this thing breaks away, it is very hard to, like, put back together and keep it that way because if you ever, like, slightly touch it wrong, it will explode in your hands. So I'd really like to see a new guitar mold that does not fall apart in your hands. It doesn't need to break away all the time because now, you know, we've, we've seen this so many times over the years that I think it's okay to give us a guitar that does not break away. And then people that want the breakaway guitar, they're going to either have to hunt it down or, or something like that. Or give us two guitars. Put one guitar in there that breaks away and one that does not. I don't know. Let me know what you think there. But you do get a good guitar. And we also need like recolorations and stuff like that. It's always the same acoustic guitar every damn time. However, man, that pretty much wraps up our Legend Set review of Series 20, the Target exclusive WWE Elite Legend Series 20 wave. And now that we've done this, let's go ahead and rank this set from worst to best in my own personal opinion. Go ahead and get these guys out of here. All right, man, coming in at the bottom of our ranking is going to be the Greg the Hammer Valentine figure. I mean, nothing against the figure. It's just the character that I probably least like the most. The pinless joints, while I do like the new leg mold, I still feel like they're a bit stiff, man. They just, I don't know, something about pinless joints just make them really, really stiff. And it's only in the knees. Like, the arms feel fine. It's only the knees that I find, you know, the, the legs are, like, harder to bend and things of that nature. But Greg the Hammer comes in at the bottom. Up next in our ranking is going to be the Triple H figure, which actually kind of shocks me, to be honest with you. Because I love Triple H and I actually do like this iteration of him. Even though it is a repeat of the Elite from the Ultimate. And that's probably what holds it back. If it was different gear, he'd be higher on the list. Or if we never got that Ultimate, he'd be much higher on the list. You know what I mean? So there's that. But I really enjoy the figure still. I like the cloth goods. I like the things about it. But definitely could have been better in a lot of ways. Up next, we do have the Mr. Perfect figure.
figure. I didn't really think I was going to like the way this figure is presented to us here coming into the video with the, you know, the rubber upper shirt and whatnot, but I think pulling down the straps really brings a lot of enjoyment out of the figure for me personally. And I like that figure pretty good. I, I like the boots. I like the head sculpt. It's actually pretty damn solid. And then coming down to two and one is going to be between the Chase Ted DiBiase and the regular edition Ted DiBiase and whoosh. This is really tough, man, but at the end of the day, I think I'm going to go green suit at number two, and then I'm going to go with the chase variant white suit at the beginning or at the number one spot. You guys know I love the white suits. Uh, my favorite, super fresh, super clean, even though the green suit is a damn nice figure, I still like it. The suited bodies are just so good. I love them. They're very highly articulated. A lot of good things going on with these figures, man, but that's pretty much going to wrap up the WWE Elite Legend Series 20 Target Exclusive Figure Set Review for me. A lot of enjoyable things about this wave, but, you know, you guys can be the judges down in the comment section below. Leave your judgments. Leave a like on the video, please. Subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at Toys. A huge shout-out to our patron supporters of the MDT YouTube channel. Always appreciate you guys so very much for your continued support. Always love and appreciate you guys for all that you do. You guys are the absolute goats, but I'm getting out of here, man. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to the channel. I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a blessed one, and I'll catch you later. <laughs>